registering. You can so, go. good morning, everyone. Let's continue with this lecture on production and supply chain issues in medical technology projects, which my colleague Rocio, Rocio Rodriguez Rivero and myself will, will give. In this lecture, we are going to introduce some aspects after a very nice and inspiring week of devoting ourselves to the conceptual design. Now it is time to focus on the implementation of the different devices and to consider uh, some interesting aspects linked to production and supply chain. Also, this will help us to, um, just a second, because I cannot pass the PowerPoint slide. This will help us also to, um, Maybe with, the, with the, the, the role? No, no, it's fine. Oh. This will help us, thank you. This will help us to introduce some interesting aspects of open source medical devices also. So I will start with an introductory case uh, linked to a device for remote diagnosis. This will help to introduce some supply chain issues in medical technology. And we will discuss also about the COVID-19 case and then we will see how different potentials of open source medical devices may help to transform the, um, the paradigm no, of, of medical industry. And also we will detail some, some challenges related. Then we will present a comparative study. And what we would especially like to do this, this session is to put the different teams into a hands-on experience for mapping key stakeholders and impacts along the life cycle, because I think this can be very interesting. We think this can be very interesting for, for the implementation stage. So let's start with the, with the medical device case. Andres, I'm sorry, we cannot see the presentation. Okay, just a second. Now? Yes. Yes, yes, thank you. Okay. Sorry. Okay, let's get started now with the introductory case. You were able to hear me, no? Yes. yes. Okay. So I will introduce this diagnostic chip project. It's a diagnostic device for urinary infections. It is a project we perform in collaboration with um with a spin-off from, from Chile. And it is related to a common problem in the region of, in the Andinian mountains. The common problem is the resistance to antibiotics and the difficult access to laboratories with testing facilities. So there is a clear need for detecting urinary infections, uh, which is called rapid antibiogram in the point of care. Normally, when you have a urinary infections, especially if you are in a remote location, it is very typical that the testing laboratory is very far. So typically also the practitioners provide a large spectrum antibiotic and this large spectrum antibiotic in principle kills many infections, but in some cases it also generates uh, antibiotic resistances. Uh, the best uh, standard for doing this is an um, antibiogram, which is normally performed with ELISA 96 well plates. It's almost a self-contained autonomous medical device, but you need important testing facilities. So our, our idea was changing from this, from this ELISA 96 well plate to a um, point of care testing device for performing the antibiogram in the point of care. So instead of having 96 well plates with different concentrations of, of antibiotics, which require also specialized equipment and very well-trained professionals, we conceived together with this Chilean spin-off uh, the diagnostic device for urinary, for urinary, urinary infections. This is more or less the kit you can see over there. The device counts with uh, nine wells instead of 96. 
So you have a control well to detect if there is infection or not. Here is the control well. And then you have eight different wells in which you can uh, place different antibiotics to analyze which antibiotic is performing well or not. Typically, in each of the wells, we introduce three things. We introduce the antibiotic, we introduce uh, nutrients for the bacteria, and we introduce a color change um, nutrient as well. So if the, um, if the bacteria are not killed, they will also synthesize this color change uh, particles and the well will have a color change. We will see this afterwards, but the idea is that this device provides a very visual uh, information for rapidly obtaining an antibiogram without requiring um, many complex equipment. To make this uh, device work, we, um, we needed a production of lots of parts. We needed to have like 1,000 components just for testing. These weeks we have been uh, describing different uh, ways of manufacturing medical devices. For prototyping, in many cases, we are proposing the use of 3D printing, but normally 3D printing is not much applied for final production. There are, of course, uh, cases in which 3D printing is applied to final production, but mostly 3D printing is for prototyping. When you need um, thousands of medical devices, each of them uh, replicable, uh, manufactured with the similar details and so on, you need to change into injection molding if we are talking about polymers. So it is a process oriented to mass production. You have this injection molding machine, um, which incorporates the plastic pellets, polymeric pellets. Here you have a screw, and the screw is connected with some heaters so that you end the screw with a molten filament with a molten plastic, which is injected into a mold. So here you can see the process, and then through the injection molding, you can obtain parts, somehow complex in many cases, and you can produce um, thousands of, or hundreds of thousands of components for systematic testing, for systematic um, commercialization. Typically, the injection molding cycle has a clamping, phase in which the two parts of the molds close, then the injection is performed. Once you inject the component, there is a cooling stage and afterwards the parts are ejected. A good thing about injection molding is that in a single mold you can also manufacture several components and then you just eliminate these sprues and runners for obtaining the final device. For medical injection molding, uh, ISO 13845 is needed, the certification for manufacturers and complex shapes can be achieved. Just uh, some minor design recommendations for injection molding. It is important to have as lower thicknesses as possible because lower thicknesses reduce molding time, molding cycle, increasing productivity. If you have thicknesses, reduces thicknesses and homogeneous thicknesses, you will obtain um, interesting devices designed for injection molding. So of course, when you are minimizing thickness, you reach uh, devices which mechanically may perform in a worse way. So of course, here you have a multi-design or multi-criteria optimization. You have to minimize thickness for increasing productivity, but at the same time, you have to warrant that the mechanical performance is enough. So in many cases, you are combining different simulations. Here you can see the on top of the page, on top of the slide, you can see a mechanical simulation upon a, in this case, it's a, a toy car mimicking a Formula One uh, vehicle. 
but you can combine these finite element simulations, as Professor Munoz Gijosa introduced last, last week, with injection molding predictions. Here you can see um, the frontal part of a car which is injected, and the injection molding simulations allow you to obtain to predict the, the time cycle of the injection molding and also the quality of the parts. You can, of course, uh, design the, the molding tools. And it is always interesting to combine the simulations with um, real tests performed upon prototypes. As in the case of the previous talk by Professor Alualia, you were combining, in some cases, in silico simulations, following mathematical models and so on, with in vitro test and in vivo test. Here it is interesting, when you are designing the geometries of a device, to combine the finite element simulations with the predictions of injection molding with tests upon uh, rapid prototypes. So there are dedicated software resources for all this, and it is also interesting to follow the recommendations for suppliers. If any of you would like to, to go in depth into these design recommendations for injection molding, you can just um, send me an email and I will be happy to discuss. Once we, going back to the case study, once we optimize the geometries, here you can see the, um, the mold manufacturer and the final injected path. So here you can see the steel molds, which allow us to obtain the um, the multi-chamber, and in this case, is the tool for placing uh, for the sample inside the, inside the chambers. And here you can see the commercial device. This device went into commercialization in, in Chile after performing a test with 500 devices in one hospital of Madrid, 500 devices in one hospital of Valencia, and 500 devices in a hospital in Chile, in Santiago. And here you can see the actual test. This is uh, an example in which there is infection because the control um, well changes color. And here you can see wells in which there is a color change. These wells in which there is a color change indicate antibiotics which are not adequate for treating this infection. So in this case, the antibiotics which would be adequate would be number two, number six, number seven, and number eight. So we have published the results, and now the colleagues from Chile are exploring different commercialization routes for reaching Colombia, Peru, Mongolia, and Mozambique also. You can imagine that in this case we were designing and manufacturing in Madrid. So it was a centralized manufacturer. And then we were sending the devices to, to Chile. And from there, they were trying to reach uh, different places where the users are. This is something, of course, difficult in some cases, especially if we are talking about the uh, mountain regions in, in Chile. Uh, and in some cases, it would be interesting to change from this uh, centralized production to a production in the point of care. As in this case, it is a device for point of care testing so that you don't have to send the samples to, to large facilities which are not close. So it would be also interesting to shift to redesign the device for local production. So this could be called, or this is somehow connected to reverse innovation, the process in which you start from an um, already available uh, technology and you redesign it for reaching uh, local populations. You redesign it for more direct produ production, for uh, using different manufacturing systems which are perhaps uh, more cost affordable. And in this case, the proposal of shifting to thermoforming was proposed by Professor Carmelo de Maria after many interesting discussions. And this is a proof of concept of the device. So you would have, instead of injection molding, you would have the uh, thermoforming tool. And then just by applying vacuum, using a um, heated uh, polymeric sheet, you would 
obtain the, the medical device. And we expect to, to follow with the, these projects in the, in the following years. But of course, similar problems related to bringing this innovation to remote regions of Mongolia, Mozambique, the Andinian mountains um, are experienced in many medical devices. We have seen uh, with the COVID-19 case that there are some challenges for making the produced devices reach patients. So there are um, challenges linked to the production rate and the number of required devices. So if you really need um, hundreds of thousands of medical devices, probably you will need to rely on more suppliers. You will also need an adequate network of warehouses and retailers. And there are, of course, transport issues from production side to users. Of course, uh, you also rely on the long-term sustainability of the supplier. In some uh, previous projects, we were using some special materials for sensing devices. And when we wanted to uh, scale up industri industrially, we noticed that the supplier of the sensing material uh, had disappeared. So we had to change to, um, to another supplier, modify a bit the design and also the, the materials. Of course, you have to comply with international regulations because a medical device designed uh, for Europe may not be directly commercial in, in other parts of the world. Um, this morning, we were also hearing in the, um, in the talk by Beatrice, by Beatrice that it is important to involve users and users from the very beginning of the project because they will be more aware of the local production conditions, of the um, regulations that may apply. I mean, they may be, uh, of course, wishing to help so that the innovation uh, makes an impact. And of course, good practices and ethical behavior are important. And let me, let me make a, a reflection this has been a selection of publications from the last months linked to medical devices uh, connected to dealing with the COVID-19. And to put it um, clear, um, I as an European feel a bit ashamed of how our governments have behaved. In some cases, we were dealing with cases like in our brother, brother country, France, which was retaining, keeping materials that Spain had bought uh, while we were already dying here in Madrid and the wave had not reached France yet. We were in need of medical devices which were not reaching for due to supply chain um, challenges. Uh, of course, we have seen that having China as the large factory of the world is in some cases counterproductive for making medical devices reach normal uh, users worldwide. Uh, we have seen that many countries in Europe were receiving uh, medical devices from China which were not according to the specifications. So we received many, many uh, diagnostic kits which were malfunctioning, so this prevented a rapid response against the epidemic. Also, uh, within the European Union, we have seen uh, political uh, revenges. I am speaking about the, the case of Holland, which was for some weeks uh, preventing or reluctant to helping Southern Europe I don't know if it was a sort of revenge for having um, the fact that Spain won the World Cup 10 years ago. There you can see the young kicking uh, Xavi Alonso in the heart. And this is just a, a very recent article in which we have seen Europe divided. So for sure we can do much better uh, in the future. And which is inspiring for me is to see that here in this Bootcamp, we are many nationalities working together 
and pushing forward open source medical devices. This is in fact what we are doing. We are developing medical technology together, uh, sharing international experience, multicultural themes, and of course we believe that these open source technologies, when we are sharing this knowledge, will help to achieve uh, more equitable medical technologies. Just to make an, an analysis of the potentials and challenges of open source medical devices, we were mapping uh, different sus sustainable development goals with the potential benefits and the potential risks of open source medical devices. Of course, we don't have much time for explaining in detail, but for instance, you can imagine that perhaps open source medical devices have an impact on quality education. For instance, the devices we are developing here these weeks together may for sure be useful for uh, future uh, boot camps, for future international schools as case studies. If we are promoting open source medical devices, we are of course somehow partnering to achieve the global goals. In a way, this may lead also to more responsible consumption and production, especially if we are able to produce locally with local materials. So I would like you to go in deep into this presentation afterwards. But just a simple case study. Uh, we made a brief comparison between a hand prosthesis developed with traditional versus open source approaches. And here there are some impacts uh, mapped according to the different life cycle stages. Imagine the production impacts. If we go into the closed sol solution of the conventional hand prosthesis, it may, it may be probably produced in large production sites or cities, typically China, probably very far from the final user. So assembly may be performed in the design and selling site after receiving the components and then delivered to the final user. Of course, environmental impacts of transport are important. However, with the open source approach, we may create hubs of medical fab labs for uh, the localized production strategy. So you produce locally just by downloading the information available in the cloud. If we go into the um, use related impacts, the presence of design and manufacturing hubs close to users may help with maintenance and minimize maintenance transport impacts, for instance, in the case of open source medical devices. In the case of supply chain, instead of dealing with complex transport networks, we may rely on point of care production. So this mapping of impacts is something very interesting, as my colleague Rocio Rodriguez will explain in the following minutes before letting you all uh, work with your devices. So Rocio, please go ahead. Thank you, Andres. Uh, good evening, everyone. We are going to follow with this interesting session together with my colleague, Professor Diaz Lantada. And let's go to, to, to mapping key stakeholders and also the, the impacts of your projects. Uh, when, when you make a, a product for, for people, uh, the first thing is to know about, about the people. For, for, for instance, uh, if, if you remember the first sample that uh, Professor Diaz Lantada talked about, the, the people in these uh, Andinian areas, in these Andinian mountains, live uh, remote and has some difficult for for accessing to um, diagnosis in this case the the urinary infections uh, and if thanks that people think about the needs of these people will be possible to develop this device uh, so it's very important to know who who is the people that is uh, affected for your for your device, but it's important also to know that the stakeholders are not the only are not people that uh, is affected by your project. 
also it's important, it's interesting to know that stakeholders can be the people that can also affect your project, uh, like competitors, for instance. Uh, so first step should be to, to identify both stakeholders, the ones that can affect the project and the ones that can be affected by the project. Second slide, please. Thank you. Um, for instance, the, the stakeholders could be the, the consumers, uh, pro production partners and, and owners. Mm, these groups could be people or also could be entities. And I think that this is uh, obvious that consumers are very important uh, in, this, in this identification, but also producers because they could help to, to give value to your, to your product during the, the process of the supply chain, but also because they could be competitors. So it is very interesting to, to it's, it's necessary to identify them. Partners could be the, the groups of people or entities that can help you because they can act as facilitators and collaborate with you because uh, you will be the owners of, of your products. Mm. In, in, next slide, please, Andres. Uh, the second step after this identification of, of the stakeholders will be to know the impacts of, of the product. Uh, since the 20, 2030 agenda was signed by the 193 countries and with the support of the United Nations in the 2015, the 17 Sustainable Development Goals were defined uh, the idea of sustainability. And this, this global idea of sustainability was supported for these three main components. They are the environmental uh, sphere, the economical and the, and the social. And these three main components are, are very necessary to, to take into account when you are identifying impacts of your products. Thank you. Um, in, in, in any impact study, through the project life cycle, you must try to identify the, the phases of, of, the, of the life cycle of the project. For instance, the, the most common ones could be these five that you can see in this table. First one is the, is the design or, or the concept. Uh, second one could be the, the production. Mm, later, it's very interesting to consider the supply chain that very linked to, to move the, the product from where is um, produced to, to where is uh, consu finally consumed. Um, for, for that reason, it's very important the, the, um, the thing that Andres was talking about of the idea of producing uh, the, the devices locally to, to avoid this uh, supply chain. Uh, fourth step could be, could be the, the stage of the use of the, of the product. And the last one will be the, the end of, of life of the product, where the, the recycling is very important. In, in any of these stages, you can um, ask yourself some of these questions that will help to identify um, the impacts in, in the three components that I've talked about before. The, for, for instance, in the, in the stage of the design, some questions that you can ask will be, uh, it will be possible to obtain the materials locally. And if this uh, work of obtaining the, the, the raw materials uh, could generate work for people in, in, the, in the local area. And what is the cause of, of this raw material? In, in, these, in these three questions, um, you, you, could, you could see some related impact with economical aspect, um, link it with the, with the generation of work, um, the cost of the raw material, and also aspect linked with uh, 
social aspect and, and environmental aspects. I think that if you follow these questions during the time that you are going to have now for, for working with these ideas, it's going to be very helpful for you. Uh, next slide. Well, uh, always that you are identifying some, some impacts uh, and stakeholders, um, it's, it's very interesting identify uh, in, in which stage these uh, stakeholders are, um, are most frequently involved. Um, for instance, uh, one stakeholder could be involved in, in the, mainly involved in the design and production stage and not in the, not during supply chain. Um, um, and then will be very, very important to identify in which state is mainly involved every stakeholder of, of the project. And sometimes some stakeholders could be involved in, in more than one stage, as, as you can see in this example. So in, in, next, style, in, in next slide, you can, you can see what we want that you work with during this next, I don't know, it may be, Yes, we, we have time, we have enough time. So you have 30 minutes now to think about the stakeholders that could affect your, your projects and also to identify the, the impacts that your product uh, could generate in these three components, environmental, social and economical um, aspects. In, here you have some, some instructions uh, of how to fill this table. For instance, when, when you identify some stakeholders, it's very, very important to, to also include uh, which are their motivations and capabilities to contribute to the projects uh, in any of these uh, types of stakeholders that you can see here in this table. And, and the second table that we want to fill in is about the impacts along the life cycle of the, of the product. Uh, and here we are expecting that you also include uh, environmental, social, and economical impacts. Maybe in in some of the of the stage of the of the life cycle, it's most uh, it's easier to find some, for instance, environmental aspect. But we we will push you to to try to identify these three impacts in every of the states because only if you think about it, it's going to be possible to, to identify them in, in a future time. So it's time for, for you to, to work together in teams. Uh, we would like to uh, ask Carmelo if it would be possible to, to assign people into the rooms for working together and we will be very happy if after 20 minutes, 25 minutes, um, some of you could present the, the work that has been done during these during this minutes. Okay, I just... Uh, I am sharing the, um, the presentation so that you all have also the opportunity to fill in the, in the tables. I am sending it to the, to the chat and okay, you should receive you. it in just five minutes seconds okay so i just wait uh the tandas upload the presentation and uh after that i will open the the rooms i think 20 minutes may be okay i think so and then five minutes of discussion okay so uh, rooms are open it Okay, so some team who wants to share the written down stakeholders and impacts? Yes, yes. Go ahead, please. Okay, um, I, I cannot see uh, you, but uh, you can share your screen if you want. Uh, I won't be sharing a screen. I, I didn't type it down. 
uh, I just wrote a rough roughly down here. Okay. okay. So I'm I'm representing uh, team nine, uh, the shield team. So for our consumers, we have uh, identified the hospitals, general public. Uh, our producers, uh, it's, it's going to be competitors, uh, producers of a scanner. Because the, the scanner we're trying to we, to produce, it's it's made up of a, a image uh, spectroscope. You know, can be used to scan the PPE and and detect the contaminants or, or gems. So. The partners that we've identified is the World Health Organization, it's the EU, universities around the country, and also obviously Ubora. They, they, they can be our partners. We also, the, the owners, it's just us as a team. So as I've said, the design is made of a meet, uh, image spectroscope. And it's made up of a PLA, which are biodegradable. You know? And it can, it, within the design, we can generate work for these universities I've just mentioned. Uh, so some of, of their work we can take care of. Production-wise, we would have to undergo five different stages. Like I uh, would have to have obviously a 3D printer uh, printing out our product and also we'll have a biometrical material to to actually try and not uh, have hazardous uh, 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 electricity for for the consumer uh, supply chain will obviously use shipment flights uh, here in Africa even taxis uh, and also, uh, for now, they, those are the, the trees we've just identified. And also, with the use, we have, we're trying to achieve that we want to have an impact to help, want to develop a sustainable economy, uh, obviously job creation, uh, as well as reduction of, of the number of cases cases or infection. End of life, uh, what we quite concerned about is the cost of the material we will be using to, to build this, this uh, device. So, and maybe at a later stage, we'll try and, and, and recycle it uh, and, and, and try and, and, and have components that are recyclable. Thus, we are sustaining, we are doing a social impact there. We are creating an awareness of, the, of an environmentally friendly economy. And also obviously the sustainability of the environment. Uh, that's all we decided to have as team nine. Okay, thank you very much. I'm not sure if, if... Any any of you any any other one could share something? Some other groups. Team one, for example. Okay, so yeah, hi. Okay, so I'm here um, from Team One, and some of the consumers that we have identified for our project are healthcare professionals and some potential patients as well as citizens. And the producers are local manufacturers near the places where they will be, where these um, our products will be used. So basically, we're doing. Um, face shield, face mask, and UV sterilizer. So these are the producers. Then the partners that we identified are Yubora partners and the owners um, intellectual property wise, it will be the original team of the de de developers, which is 
um, our group. And as for the impacts, environmental wise, we identified that um, if the if the components are reusable and recyclable, um, we will be able to minimize the impact of uh, issues that it, the impact that it has on the environment. And social wise, um, in the design phase, the we identified that we could learn from the learn from others in the team, and uh, the use under use people will be protected by while using our products, and jobs will be created, em employment will be created for locals, and economic wise, um, there will be a lesser need for having to manufacture more. Um, parts due to the recyclability and reusability of our products and economical wise more jobs will also be created for the locals. That's it. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much for sharing. What about group three? Yes, we there's have a here some partners group from group three. There are some people from group three, yes. Group four also. The important is that, of course, you will use those table also for your device. Uh, use those table in the final presentation uh, to organize a speech of, I remember you, uh, six minutes, no more than that. Six minutes to present the projects and to be uh, appreciated by the stakeholders who will participate. Okay. I think that the other groups are a bit shy, probably. You don't want to force them. No problem. Hello? Hello? Uh, I was in group four, but most of my members were a little bit held up and because of the issues with the bundles, right, right now daytime is hard. But I checked at some of the aspects alone. Okay. Answer some. We're looking at the consumers, uh, the general public. We are doing the automated hand washing system. So for the consumers, the general public, more so the institutions like schools and banks, malls, and for the produ producers, we'll just get locally available materials from the electronic shops. We can get microcontrollers from there. The welders can give us foot pedal. Uh, partners will partner with the institutions of uh, like banks themselves they can we can partner with them so that we put our device with them schools university to help us in research and uh, bora the bora people and for the owners it is us the team members environmental wise we are looking at how we can recycle the gray water from the washing system thought of passing it through sand and charcoal to absorb some of the soap and we can use that to irrigate a flower bed or even grass in a field yeah, the, the, uh, I, I, I reached there because i was alone the others could not get to us at the moment oh i'm happy that uh, you tried also by yourself mm -hmm. to, to discuss of course uh, share this uh, this class with your teammates yeah. um, and then of course you can start from this your thoughts to arrange a, a team view uh, any other so thank you again Clifford uh, other people who want to to present something Interesting discussion, that of ownership in open source medical devices, eh? Intellectual property is intellectual property. No one uh, would like to, 
so attribution is the force of open source. Without attribution, uh, we will not have open source. So attribution means also quality. You put your face. Yes. And if something is not working, it's your fault. If it is working, it's your merit, I mean. Or yeah, it is yes. your fault too, I don't know. <laughs> so guys, I want to thank you very much. Thanks again, Rocio. Thanks again, Andres, for uh, your speech. Just stop sharing, stop recording.